Uh, greetings of the day, everyone. My name is Mrs. Okia Biola, a mental health nurse and an addiction professional. Mm -hmm. As we all know, today is 24th of May. Today is 24th of May, which is the Schizophrenia Awareness Day. And today, this year's theme for the Awareness Day is Stay Connected. Now, let's. I just want to have a little and brief review of what schizophrenia is all about and how we can dictate a person that has it and what to do. Let's start. Schizophrenia is a major mental disorder that affects a person's ability to think, to feel and to behave normally. That is, the patient or the person in question will have a loss in contact, lost, we lost contact with reality. The usual age of onset of this adult schizophrenia is between the ages of 15 to 20 years. Actually, it tends to develop earlier in males than in females. In some cases, a person will start to show the unusual behavior from childhood, but this only becomes significant when they grow older. While in others, the symptoms may disappear, may appear suddenly. Schizophrenia is a long life condition. It is not curable, but the treatment can help to relieve or to manage the symptoms. Now let's go into the causes of schizophrenia. Actually, the main cause of schizophrenia is idiopathic, which means it is unknown. But however, we have some other factors that contribute to the development of schizophrenia. The first one is genetic inheritance. A person's risk rises if one of the parent or grandparent has a diagnosis or has been diagnosed of it. So the person's genetic makeup may have the schizophrenic gene. The second one is chemical imbalance. When there is a chemical imbalance in the brain, it occurs when there is an imbalance with one neuro, neurotransmitter as a chemical that transports messages, that sends messages to the brain, a neurotransmitter called dopamine, and sometimes um, another one that is called serotonin. When there is an imbalance in the hormone level, it can lead to schizophrenia. The third one is environmental factor. The environmental factor, it, it has a whole lot of factors. It includes maybe trauma during childbirth, malnutrition before birth, uh, viral infections, psychosocial factors such as trauma or accident or head injury. Then there are some certain drugs and medications that has um, proven to contribute to the development of schizophrenia. There was a research that was done in 2017 that shows that some substance in cannabis, cannabis popularly known as marijuana or Igbo in Yoruba language, it shows that there are some substances in it that can trigger the development of schizophrenia for those that are susceptible to it. And however, some schizophrenic patients are more likely to use schizophrenia in the first place because when they have the symptoms of schizophrenia they tend to use substance like cannabis to suppress the symptoms so what are the symptoms of schizophrenia the first symptoms it's it actually affects people differently and in different ways but there are some common symptoms the first one is psychosis which include delusions and hallucinations. Talking about delusion as a type, as one of the symptoms of schizophrenia. Delusion, when a person is deluded, the person believes strongly, all the strong belief to a particular thing, but there is no strong evidence to it. For example, the person might believe that they are very important. They might tell you, oh, I am the dangote, when you fully know that they are not. They call that grandiose delusion. Someone may believe that somebody wants to harm him or somebody is pursuing them persecutory delusion there are some people who believe they tell you they tell you they have special powers or special ability like they can heal the world they have special abilities like jesus christ 
you know they are just deluded that's it's still part of grandiose delusion the second most common type of symptoms that a schizophrenic patient will experience is hallucination hallucination affects all senses a person may feel that's when they feel that is tactile they may smell they may hear that's auditory that's the most common what it is not what is not what is not really there they will tell you that uh, they can smell something they, they see something that's visual hallucination they can tell you they see their great grandfather that that has died many years ago so that's it. but the most common type of hallucination is the auditory hallucination however there are so many other signs and there are so many signs and symptoms of schizophrenia they include social isolation disorganized behavior aggressive behavior agitation repetitive movement you see some of them they will be repeating a particular movement they will be walking in a particular direction stereotypic way of movement they are taught disorders they are amnesia they have there is amnesia amnesia is loss of memory they have feeling they will feel some of them will feel detached from themselves there is loss of interest in pleasurable activities some of them will experience elevated mood or inappropriate emotional response you may tell them oh you just lost your father and they will be laughing that's inappropriate emotional response incoherent speeches lack of motivation difficulty in concentrating in a particular event as in a particular activity then the treatment among others actually when they want to make a diagnosis diagnosis is based on what the psychiatrist or the mental health practitioner see what they see and the family history they got from people that brought the patient to the hospital and you know the patient must have at least one month must have experienced this some of the symptoms that i just mentioned majorly they they need to have hallucination they need to be deluded disorganized speech or grossly disorganized behavior or negative symptoms like lack of motivation emotional flatness or lack of speech at all some of them will just be moot you'll be talking to them they'll be looking they have a blunt blunt face facial a blunt facial expression so they must have at least experienced these symptoms for at least one or two or three of these symptoms i just mentioned now for at least one month before the diagnosis of schizophrenia can be made by the psychiatrist then what are the treatment options for psychiatry like i told you earlier it's a long life condition and it cannot be cured it can only be managed so with effective treatment and good social support it can help a person to manage the symptoms to prevent relapse relapses reoccurrence of the symptoms and to avoid hospitalization the treatment involves a combination of medications, antipsychotics, we have a whole lot of them which I may not be able to mention here. We have psychotherapy that is usually done by the mental health nurses, the doctors, the psychiatrists, the psychologists and all the team because we work as a team. And other coordinated specialized services according to the patient's need. There are some other therapies that can be done, family therapy, because the families need to be aware of the situation and the condition of the patient and how to manage the condition at home. Behavioral therapy, that is replacing the unpleasant and or harmful behavior with a positive ones. Then a whole lot of psychotherapy. Then rehabilitation, that's retraining the patient back into the society. That is a few review i will have to do about schizophrenia for now if you have any question about schizophrenia and maybe you notice one of your loved ones is presenting with them so with some of some of the symptoms that i just mentioned you can contact the nearest hospital